said in the first service when I went, oh man, I needed that. I still need that. And thank you so much, Rochelle. I'm going to do something a little different. Usually on communion Sundays, which is today, we have a litany right before the Lord's Supper. But I'm going to also do additionally a litany right before the message. It's a new year. It's a new year when we make resolutions and pledges and that sort of thing. And uh, this has to do with that. Very, very simple. Uh, you know, you could think in terms of, uh, you know, pledging how many Sundays you're going to come to church and whatnot. And, and along that line, I, I found this, that, you know, how to be safe this coming year. Avoid riding in automobiles because 20% of all fatal accidents happen in automobiles. Uh, don't stay at home because 17% of all accidents occur at home. Avoid walking on streets or sidewalks because 14% of all accidents occur to pedestrians. Avoid traveling by air, rail, or water because 16% of all accidents involve those forms of uh, transportation. But you will be pleased to learn that only 0.001% of all deaths occur in worship services in church. And uh, so the logic tells you that this is the safest place to be in the given year. So go ahead and pledge how many times you're going to be here. But more generally, let's pledge ourselves to God in this coming year using this little, little litany. Together we say, this day we bow before Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we pledge ourselves to following Him in the This day we commit to knowing His Word. Let us all say yes to God today for 2021 and always. Amen. Amen. So as I mentioned, this is a Sunday which we talk about three kings traditionally, and this is the text. Matthew chapter 2. Listen carefully. This is the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet in the Bible, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a journey that the wise men made. And when you think about it, there are all sorts of journeys in the Bible, and particularly all sorts of journeys related to the Christmas story. Just a Think about it for a second with me. There's Gabriel's journey to Mary to announce the baby. There's Mary's journey to Elizabeth for them to talk about their uh, pregnancies. There's uh, Joseph and Mary journeying to the city of David for the census. 
there is uh, the shepherds that night when the baby was born. They, they come from the hillsides to the, the crib side. And then there are the wise men. We just read about them. They come from afar and they come to that same crib side. And we didn't quite read it, but if you know the story, how it keeps going, Herod is going to come in the form of soldiers, murderous soldiers, just ahead of his arrival. There's another journey that starts, that is Joseph and Mary to protect the baby, uh, go down and uh, have a flight to Egypt. And then when all the dust is settled, there's a journey back. And of course, all of this begins with what? It begins with the journey of Jesus from heaven to earth, from humanity, divinity to humanity. And I want to talk with you and preach to you this morning about journeys. I've got seven points to this sermon. And the last point has two subpoints. So whatever we say about this sermon, you cannot say that it's pointless, okay? Uh, but for this journey through these points, fasten your seatbelt because we need to travel fast and I want you to pay close attention, will you? The first point is that there are all sorts of journeys. I just mentioned ones that were geographical, but you know that there are journeys through careers. There are are romantic autobiographies, financial autobiographies, reflecting those kind of journeys. And everybody has a life or spiritual journey. Are you considering the journeys of your life? I hope you will. The second point is that everyone has a spiritual journey. You cannot not have a spiritual journey. A spiritual journey has to do with a progress in wisdom and character in relating to God. Uh, Mother Teresa had a spiritual journey and so did Joseph Stalin. It wasn't that one had a spiritual journey and the other didn't. They both had spiritual journeys and in the journey they came to forks in the road and took different places and the outcomes were different because of that. But they both had a spiritual journey. Are you paying attention to not only the many journeys of life, that you have a spiritual journey, whether you want to or not, you have one. So what are you going to do with it? Uh, the third point is that journeys are precipitated by need and desire. If you need milk in your refrigerator and you want it, you journey to the grocery store, don't you? Yeah. Same is true for these wise men. If they had been completely content and had uh, their curiosity satiated, they would not have journeyed. But here they are, people who have some kind of influence, degrees, wealth, power, prestige, and yet they had a need and a curiosity that brought them out on the open road. Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention to your needs? your wants, your curiosities. They're part of doing the spiritual journey. And I want you to know that when you look into your heart, every human heart has this. You're not an exception. There's a Herod and there are wise men, one on one side, one on the other, if you want to think of it that way. And you see, Herod wanted, needed, desired to be his own king. The wise men were looking for a true king. If you'd asked them, how's it going running your own kingdom, being your own king, they would have said, not so well. That's why we are on a journey. Every person is going to be affected on their journey by whether they want to be their own king or whether they need the true king. The fourth point is that journeys take effort. Uh, these wise men had to saddle up the camels and they had to pack their lunches and they had to deal with the heat of the sun and the sand in the day and they had to deal with the cold of the night and the sand at night. It took focus and investment and time and energy. What are you doing for this spiritual journey? So many people say, uh, I'm looking for God, but what is actually happening? for you in that looking for God? What kind of real investment and time and commitment is there? And some people say, well, you know, I, I really am a seeker. And they, they, I, I'm seeking, I, I, I'm seeking. And 
And, but you know, I'm just not finding. And in fact, there's something good about claiming to be a seeker, because once you find it, it seems like you kind of have the answer. So I'm going to be a seeker. I want to tell you, never go to a mechanic whose motto over the door is always seeking, never finding. Okay? Uh, you're going to get ripped off. And if that's true with a mechanic, it's also true when it comes to the spiritual life. Jesus said, you will seek and find, okay? But he didn't say this was just gonna fall out of the sky and hit you on the head. There's that word seek, seek, and you will find. It takes effort. How, how are you doing with the effort? Are you just saying you're seeking or are you really seeking and knowing that there's a finding? The next point is that journeys usually go from the general to the specific. Goes from the general to the specific. Now, uh, there are several different ways to get to my house, but eventually, from the several different ways, you have to get onto one particular street and pull into one particular driveway. It's very particular. <laughs> See, uh, for the wise men, there was a, a star in the sky. And, uh, you, you know, the universe had the star, Israel had the Bible. And the, the star got them partway, the Bible got them all the way. The star got them to the country of Judah, the Bible got them to Bethlehem in Judah. And so we, we are brought even more specifically than to Bethlehem and Judah, but to the crib of Jesus the Christ. So Jesus is the one who is at the end of this journey. And once we go, oh, well, that's very specific. You're talking about Jesus the Christ. You're not talking about just deities in general. Don't you think it's a little safer, a little wiser, a little more tolerant, a little more sophisticated to be an agnostic and talk about deities in general, because once you get specific, you're, you're really getting specific. Hey, listen, when you go to a doctor and you've got pneumonia and he says, I'd just like to treat you with the general idea of medicine, I want to warn you off, you need to get to specifics. I have a stepson who's flying to Plano. It isn't good enough for him just to get to the Orlando airport. He's got to get to a specific gate. Don't you see? And so in this journey, there is a specificity that is really the way life works. Jesus is the one. And this specific one, the next point is universal. Universal. See, a lot of times we go, well, you know, Pastor Jeff, you said Jesus is the answer. We're Westerners, and that's good for us as Westerners. But you know, if you were born in Tibet, there's another answer. And we should just leave it that way. But I want to say to you, if it was that way, why didn't God just put a candle in Jerusalem rather than a star over the earth? See, the, the star was where everyone could see. And these magi, they came from a foreign place and they knelt. And when they knelt, it says they were overwhelmed with joy and they went by a different road. They went back differently, not only in terms of the path, but in terms of who they were because they had found Jesus. You see, if a star in the sky had been good enough, why have the Bible? And if the star in the sky and the Bible in general had been good enough, why have Jesus? Why, why have this story? There, there's something specific that is needed. And God sent Jesus. God so loved the world that he sent his only son. And the seventh and final point is that the journey ends in a person. And I want you to hear two things. The journey ends. There's a seeking and finding. You know, you don't want to go to a university where they just keep enrolling you in classes but never grant you the degree. Don't go there. And you don't always want to be chewing and never swallowing. And 
You don't want it to always be winter and never Christmas. That's not the way it works. There is a finding. The journey does come to an end. It isn't over and over and restlessness. There is a destination. And that destination and peace and rest is a person. It's not a place. It's a person. It's not a principle of love. It's not an idea of the noble. It is Jesus Christ. See, when we close the book on history, read the last page and close it. When you close the book on your life, you're going to look up and Jesus is going to be standing there. And he's going to be there not as the answer, although he is that, he is there as a person. Not as an answer for you simply to give, but a person for you to relate to. And as we come into 2021, I want to tell you, saddle up your camels, pack your lunch bags, go for Jesus. And when you found Jesus, do the rest of your traveling to the end of your days with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. You know, it seems kind of silly. We talk about uh, the pot at the end of the rainbow, but here we're talking about you, Lord, being at the end of all of our hopes and dreams. And we pray that you would help us to get up and go onto the open road and to learn about you and to relate to you. That's our prayer. And we know that as we come to this table, there's a new way of relating to you, remembering your death and your resurrection for us. Hear our prayers. They're made in Jesus' name. Amen.